Hi, this is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and this is Florida Natural Farming. Today I'm going to do a video on the MB fruit tree, the African mangosteen, also known as Garcinia livingstonii. It's like been my favorite tasting MB or Garcinia tr fruit that we have here. And we fruit seven different types of Garcinias. Five of them produce fruit year round. This being one of them, Garcinia livingstonii, produces multiple crops a year here for us. Uh, and I'm gonna explain how it's done. And um, it's a, either a male or it's a bisexual tree. So it's dioecious or monoecious, depending on what type of tree you have. Uh, having male trees around the bisexual monoecious trees is helpful for fruit, fruit production. I'm positive of that. So this is a monoecious tree and it's uh, getting quite big. Uh, I got this at the uh, Palm Beach Rare Fruit Council and it had a tag on it from Excalibur and it's a grafted tree. It has like a male and a female on it. Um, but the whole tree produces fruit. This particular tree has not held fruit to maturity. The reason being is I have never given it any type of uh, zebu manure inputs. I believe that, I'm positive that is the reason why uh, we get so much fruit because I've noticed on trees like the African mangosteen or the MB tree that if I give it nice inputs of our miniature zebu manure that it fruits and flowers year round. This tree does flower year round, but it sets fruit in the summer. And when it's the temperatures like above 95 or 90, uh, something in the high 90s, it just will not set fruit or it will abort the fruit. So I planted more than 200 seedlings of this this year, and I've been planting them in the past. I don't buy fruit tree seeds. Uh, because I don't have to. Uh, we produce our own here. Uh, it's just somebody asked that was here recently, uh, the guy from Urban or Urban Abundance, uh, asked how many fruit trees we have. Well, when I was biodynamic certified and organic certified, I would keep records of all the seeds we planted and all the trees we planted. But since I'm not biodynamic certified anymore. I see little frogs jumping through the system. I don't have to do that. We are not biodynamic certified. We are not organic certified, but if you watch any of my videos, you know that I'm probably the most paranoid person of, uh, that wants to grow healthy food. So when I moved to Florida 13 years ago, they said you could not grow organic here. It's hard to grow organic because of the Poor soil quality. I had a, 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 somebody I thought was my friend come at me and say that the uh, we do not have calcareous soils in Florida, and just rah, 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 rah. Um, well, that goes against everything that I've read, and I know for a fact that most of our uh, sand is like crushed shells and. Uh, Poly coral, and it does have some quartz in it, but it's not all quartz. And if you have crushed shells and and uh, uh, crushed shells, and you're on a limestone rock, you're going to have calcareous soils. So everything I looked at has always said that we have calcareous soils in South Florida, especially in Indian River County, and that's how it produces such sweet fruit. So. It's a good way to get yourself thrown off. I, I just don't entertain frenemies, whether it's in my personal life or online especially. And I'm usually willing to give somebody a, a break that has been my friend, but I notice a change. Uh, they used to buy seeds from me and, and uh, 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 reach out to me, but all of a sudden they just stopped and then didn't want any more seeds from me. It's because I talk stuff. I talk about people that I don't think should be growing and selling fruit. 
Um, and I talk about UFL a little bit. Not all of UFL's stuff is wrong, but their nutrient recommendations and their growing recommendations for the home landscape are definitely wrong. It's a complete opposite of what we do here. So that's why I speak out. And in case that nobody knows, nutrient pollution is the number one cause of uh, global warming and death of uh, sea turtles and uh, coral and everything else here. And it's polluting our water. And it's that's why we have the number one most polluted lakes in the nation. So here's a uh, monoecious, a bisexual uh, MB tree. And it produced some fruit last year. And I have given manure around this area. So uh, daily manure. Uh, so it has had zebu manure. And it was the like this, my uh, zebus love this stuff. Um, the weeds don't bother me. In fact, the weeds help. Uh, you got to watch like some of my most recent videos and you will see why. They're full of nutrients. They're full of water. They put water in the soil, keep and hold water in the soil. They excrete nutrients directly into the soil. So uh, they're important. And it's since we dry farm, we don't water anything when we plant it. Never. We never have. And we just... If I'd known this right from the start, we would have been a lot further along. But I remove all the soil, whether it's from my plants, somebody I know that grows well, that makes their own compost, or from the nursery especially. I remove all the soil. I throw the nursery soil away, but I keep the organic soil and I throw on top. But then the nursery soil, then I rinse the, I throw away. And then, but I, then I take the plant and I have a bucket and I rinse the roots in rainwater and then try to do as minimal uh, damage to the surrounding hole as possible. So preferably just a shovel push forward and then the plant put in there. But if it has a big root ball, I don't buy nursery trees that often. I still do periodically. I bought a Keppel tree and I bought a durian tree recently, but it's very few and far between. I do get given potted plants from friends. Thank you guys. Um, I, I, I like it because we trade. That's what I like to do. I'm not into selling fruit. I'm not into selling plants. Easily, we could have had a huge booming nursery business with all the seeds we produce here, but I'm just not into it. So this tree is a monoecious tree and it hasn't fruited or it hasn't flowered more than once, but I haven't given it direct input, which I'm going to do once I'm done with my mangoes in the back. Um, I'll show you the tree that I've given uh, daily manure. This is my daily manure right here. Look at all the fungi that comes on it, in it. I mean, you can't tell me this isn't good for your, your trees. It's grass, some, some urine from the zebus, grass hay, coastal hay. It's the one that can be approved for organic use. And uh, because it's not sprayed. And you could smell the sprays when they use it on hay. And um, it's so cheap. That's why it, you, you know they're not spraying it with glyphosate. They, they could be using Grazon, but I doubt it because I see weeds in it sometimes. And um, so that's what it looks like after a few months. Just as incredible. This is my little boy, Romy. He's my little, my little pet. Um, he's uh, out of my, my cow, Pepsi, Bogle Farms Uma. And he is just the sweetest little boy and I walk him around and he's getting a big hump and he's quite attractive. He's just a little good guy. This zebu manure is so powerful here on our Florida sand, our calcareous soil. Calcareous means it has a high calcium content, calcium carbonate. And you can change soil to a calcareous soil if it's quartz by using the deep flow wells, which come out of the bedrock, which is limestone, which is uh, calcium carbonate infused water. <clears throat> oh, I forgot to look at that male tree. I'm gonna get back on the MB and then I'm gonna segue into plastic pollution because I feel that's the biggest threat to uh, our health in, it's just like, it's so scary to think that people, grow fruit trees in pots and they use chemicals and then they use shade cloth and or else they put them in the ground in their in their greenhouse uh, which uses plastic and plastic has been shown to leach out into your 
soil. This is a male tree, a dioecious tree. Uh, I have a male tree that flowers year round. That's how I knew that I could get uh, fruit year round from the MB with a little uh, manure input. So I've been given the male tree manure input. So I'll go look at that. But this tree I've never put manure next to. So it just doesn't fruit a lot. But look at the leaf size on it. It's just super healthy, super nice trees. They're good looking trees. They do kind of tip over in the in the uh, sand sometimes. Not always, but um, I don't mind. I really don't uh, micromanage the, the forest trees. I, I kind of remove myself from the system. I try to put the manure down all the time, daily, or not try, I do. In fact, I got the third or the sixth COVID shot. I, ch I chose to get the COVID shot. I, I, I believe, I understand those that don't want to get it or those that got it, but I made the decision to get it. And um, I believe that maybe I had long COVID when I got the shot just the other day. I was so sick with flu and shivering and just smelling weird and um, uh, just, it just really affected me and pain. I barely thought I was gonna be able to do my farm chores yesterday. And I had 50 um, bread nut seeds I had to plant because I'd been soaking them in water. I bought them from Montoso Gardens. I like their seeds. I like Oscar's seeds at Fruit Lovers. <clears throat> uh, I, the other fruit seller seeds haven't been successful for me. Um, I'm sure some of their seeds are good, but once I have a bad experience, uh, a stuff not germinating, I tend to not go back, especially if it's the first time I tried them and they don't germinate. Um, so I do like Montosa Gardens in Puerto Rico. I've been buying from him for years, more than 13 years. And um, I like uh, fruit lover trees, nurseries. And I've been buying from him for 13 years also, Oscar. Thank you guys, Oscar and Brian. <coughs> so, yeah, I was just really sick. And you know how COVID affects me? It affects me because of my, I can't go to the bathroom regularly. So I know that I have COVID when I, I'm only going to the bathroom once a day, number two. And I got the shot and now I'm back to doing it multiple times a day. So it does help it, me. So I, I chose to get it. But I wanna talk about the plastic pollution and people growing in plastic pots. And I'm not picking on anybody because you can't escape the plastics. I understand. I just want people to be aware that it's a problem. It's a real problem and all these toxic substances, these polymers that they use, the, uh, the fire retardants, the stuff are all full of PBA, PBS, uh, PFAS, PFOS, on and on and on. And they are a source of ob causing obesity. And um, they've been found, which I, I've talked about before. Look at my aeroids, they look great. Just very happy with the with the, um, uh, I, I talked a bit in my recent videos about, um, I discovered that tomatoes were causing me to grind my teeth, my org the organic tomatoes. Well, it turns out that organic tomatoes are used, or plastic is used on them almost always in organic systems here in the US, so plastic mulch in particular, but they use plastic greenhouses. If you're, if you're growing food and a plastic greenhouse and a plastic mulch and a plastic pot, guaranteed you're consuming microplastics that are dangerous to your health. And if you've got children, they affect them the worst. So I tried to, I switched over. I had plastic pots. I switched over to um, terracotta pots and it was a little expensive because the pots are kind of expensive, but um, the plants seem to do very well in them and they last forever and I don't have to worry about it polluting my soil. Um, so it's a, it's a win-win and it just, you can't get away from the plastics. It's all the food is pa packaged in it. And, and so what I do is I take the food that I get that's in plastic and instantly remove it like dried, dried herbs and stuff and put it in a glass container. It's not cheap, it's not easy, but we all need to do our part because obviously the chemical companies are not gonna do their part. They just wanna poison us. <clears throat> and the, uh, if you're growing your fruit trees in black plastic pots, 
you're consuming microplastics. And personally, I think that, you know, this is so ridiculous. So I have like so many rules because I use raw manure of what I have to follow. And meaning I can only apply raw manure. Uh, it has to be applied more than 120 days before I pick the fruit, even though the E. coli does not go into the perennial fruit. Sure, it could uh, blow up and get on it, but uh, uh, if you manage your cows correctly, you don't have an E. coli problem. So, anyway, I'm going to do a link to these, these uh, sources that I talked about. And I'm going to make my way back over to some more MB trees. Uh, hello, little bunny. Bunnies are the biggest source of seedling death that we have here. So, yeah, we've planted this year more than a thousand fruit tree seeds. Uh, direct sown uh, seeds and, and some that I start in pots like uh, uh, Atamoya and sugar apple and um, there's a hummingbird. Hello, hummingbird. Oh, there's a bunch of hummingbirds. Cool. They like these uh, bromeliads. Um, we never had hummingbirds here before. We never had all these uh, beautiful uh, animals everywhere. People like to kill all that stuff here, but it's all needed. We need all this stuff. They're, we're killing them slowly with our plastic pollution and our nutrient pollution. So um, thank God I can provide them a home. <clears throat> So I did research to see uh, what the, how many times a year the MB f can fruit, uh, or if it just has one season. And uh, it just has one season according to everything I found. Miami, Florida, or UFL said in something I saw that it can flower from like May until So, I don't know, had a long flowering season, but they all say it's just one crop, one crop per year, which hasn't been the case here. Uh, uh, it sporadically has been giving our, our producing tree, that our big producing tree that I have given zebu manure to uh, consistently. Um, I like to experiment to see what trees do. And that's how I, I pretty much know that it is the zebu manure. It is. Uh, thank you, Hindustan, uh, for an amazing, amazing animal that uh, is like can like change Florida's um, production of fruits, dry farmed, because we don't water anything here. So this is our uh, a male tree that flowers pretty much year round, but it's taking a break. And it's just the male trees that they produce, this one produces so many flowers and it's kind of fallen over, but it's growing up. I gotta get that vine off there. I'm not gonna do it now, but you could see all the, this is all the old flowers that just must've got done. And this male tree has produced fruit before, but it's always one or two fruit. In fact, this was the first tree, MB tree that produced fruit for us here. And that's our daily manure. That's what it looks like. It's mostly grass, which is a fungally dominant, or yeah, a fungally dominant food source of nutrients for plants. So it's a home for plants, and you add a little urine from the zebus with zebu manure, and you get a like incredible uh, compost. This is what it looks like after a little while, right here. I have some trees over here that I planted. The raccoons have gotten up here and broken these, uh, or possums looking for fruit, but good luck because I haven't found any fruit on this giant MB tree, but um, they still look, or maybe they just like to play in there. I don't know. Uh, I have this weird fruit tree here that looks, I thought it was like a durian, but um, I guess they're more, my friend Jerry told me that they're more silver underneath. Um, but I'm not really sure what that is. 
And I thought that this tree was the Garcinia, uh, uh, this is from seed. This was a Gar I thought was Garcinia uh, madruno. Garcinia madruno, uh, tree chuelo, fruits year round for us here. We've got fruit on it right now. Um, so I planted seeds all over the place of, this, of the Garcinia madruno, but I'm pretty sure this is Garcinia acuminata. Uh, now that I look at the leaves a little closer. You know, it's the sweet version of the bumpy lemon or the Garcinia madruno. I, I just am a seed uh, uh, planting freak and plants seem to like, uh, look at this katuk. So the cows love the katuk. So I've been feeding little Romy the katuk. It's a lot easier getting the katuk um, from the, uh, than the weeds. And I got so much of it. I plant it everywhere. I just break it off and stick it in the ground. It grows everywhere. It's good. Uh, it's, I like it. So here's our MB tree. And look, the fruit is starting to ripe. I walked by here earlier because I thought it might have started turning orange, but it has. And I read that, I think Adam from Flying Fox Fruit said there's big variants in the fruit. Uh, not, not from what I've been able to see. A single tree like this tree has a huge variance in fruit. So some of the fruit will be gigantic, like this one's gonna be. It's two, you could tell there's two fruits in it. And some will be smaller, like that one. So it's, I noticed that all of our fruiting in bee trees, the fruit is pretty much the same. The flavor's the same. Everything is the same. I haven't seen a huge vari variation in the fruit. But that's just my knowledge. Maybe they have more experience fruiting it than I do. Uh, and I've seen, but I need to see the proof. And this is the proof. So I gave this one after it fruited last, I think it was in May or June, maybe. I think it was May, but it could have been June. Beginning of June, I got finished the fruit on it. I put a big pile here and then I'm like, well, since you produce so much fruit, I put a big pile here. So it's been five months. July, August, September, October, four months at least. So I think it was May, so it's four months. So it's 120 days uh, and uh, or something like that. I don't know, I don't care. I just won't sell the fruit for food. So I could sell it for seeds. And these, this fruit is very expensive. I saw where Miami uh, Fruit sells it for about $5 each, which I have done in the past. Um, I've sold it for $3 each in the past, but then I got all the seed bu sellers buying the fruit up like in bulk. And um, I didn't really like that. So I raised the price to $4 a fruit and that kind of kept people from buying it. People boycott m my seeds, I guess, because I've talked smack about so many issues and people that um, for some reason they get a bond with their nursery and if you say anything against the nursery, uh, they just will like, uh, block you and, and, and gaslight you. You know what's going on. I mean, all you have to do is look at politics to see what's going on. It's just crazy. But I believe that's because of the food. So this has so much fruit on it. And, uh, this is the second large crop this year. And the first large crop made over $1,000 worth of fruit because I have to buy all my own fruit here because we are a business. So those 200 seeds I had to buy. Um, kind of ridiculous, but since we are a business and we get tax deductions because of it, we have to uh, report sales and, and I have to buy my fruit. So it is what it is. But it has little fruits on it, right here, little tiny ones. And it had a fruit, it set fruit when it was, or you know, it was flowering when it was warm. I showed in like uh, August and July that it had flowers on it. If you look at my August, September, um, my August and July uh, monthly farm update, I probably have this tree in there covered in fruit, but it dropped it all. And, um, it didn't, it didn't hold it until the weather cooled just a bit. And then now it's just done its thing again. And it's really an amazing tree and the fruit is spectacular. And it's got, they found that it has 
uh, new compounds. Uh, I can't think of them, but I'm going to do a link to the new study that are anti-HIV and they're anti-cancerous. And in folk medicine, they use it for stomach issues and they make a uh, poison from the the bark in Africa that used on spears and it just it's just an amazing freaking tree and the fruit is so delicious and of all the garcinias it's the only one where the fruit can ripen off the tree so you can pick it when it's when it's a little not ripe the more orange it is the better it is in fact you can leave it on the tree until the fruit is a little wrinkly and then it has it does have an alcohol uh, component to it so it tastes like some sort of alcohol candy i don't find any sourness in this fruit tiny little bit maybe it does have a very complex flavor that's why i uh i say that it's like a super super good fruit and probably the best tasting mangosteen that we grow here i'm gonna pick one early this is definitely way too early but i'm Craving out, you can tell it's the flesh is normally like super dark orange. This has a tart flavor when it's like this. If you're into tart fruit, then pick it a little light orange, but definitely wait until it's much darker orange than this. I did previous videos where it's picked at a more optimal range. or optimal time. So yeah, it's just not quite ready, but I wanted to do this video today and get it out there. And everyone should be growing this in your yard and everyone needs to like pay attention to the plastic that they're consuming and the plastic that they're using because we all can like make a difference. And that's kind of what I'm about, I'm trying to make people aware that Florida is the easiest place to grow organic in probably the world and definitely in the u.s uh tropical fruit trees for sure uh and uh i think my videos have shown that this is true uh, it's just an amazing spot anyway <laughs> that was a little tart this is eric at frog valley tropical fruit farm and this is florida natural farming and that's the mb tree i hope you have an excellent day